The, the next European rover, the ExoMars rover, of which we've got uh, a prototype here in the Mars yard at Stevenage, uh, is a smaller vehicle than Curiosity. Um, the, the vehicle that will go to Mars is about a third of the mass of Curiosity. That is to say about 300 kilograms compared to about 900 for Curiosity. But it's going to do very different work to Curiosity. Curiosity is a, is a machine to look at the past environment of Mars. Ex, the ExoMars rover is going to go with a very particular purpose. It's looking for signs of past or present life. And in particular, it's going to be looking for them underneath the surface of Mars, using a drill that will drill into the surface up to two metres deep to get samples to be analysed for those organic compounds that might be telltales of life in the past or, or even now. Well, the surface environment of Mars is very harsh and it's not a good place for the chemical markers of life to survive for long periods of time. Um, the reason it's harsh is that, uh, well one reason is that Mars lacks a magnetic field and in the case of the Earth, the Earth is protected from the radiation coming from the Sun by its magnetic field. That's not true of Mars. So the surface is subject to radiation, to particles, to ultraviolet radiation. Um, it's chemically very reactive as well, so it's not a good place for the survival of chemicals. We've built this, this Mars yard, as we, we call it, to be a representative test area for testing the ability of the rover to uh, navigate um, to control itself as it moves across ultimately what will be the, the Mars surface. Um, the, the rover is going to be designed to move um, up to about 90 metres each day and we want to have an environment in which we can test that out. We need to test it out um, where it can encounter the sort of rocks it will see on Mars, the sort of slopes that it will see and the sort of um, conditions of sand that it will see on Mars, so that we can show that not only does the software for navigation work on the rover, but mechanically that it will work as well, that its wheels will propel it along, that its um, bogey system for supporting the rover will work adequately. It's, it's a place to test out the mechanics and the navigation of the rover before it goes to Mars. Our rover, when it's on Mars, will be driving itself around fully autonomously, so we won't actually be controlling it. Uh, in the traditional sense of joystick controls. We'll give it a goal and it will survey its terrain, calculate what's in front of it and then pick the best route through itself to drive to its own goal and then let us know once it gets there. So we have to develop all of the thinking processes, all of the perception processes to make sure that our rover can see what's in front of it, accurately build up that map of where it can and can't travel and what's in front of it and then pick the best route through. The, the rover will carry a, a, a stereo camera system um, which will allow it to uh, essentially map out in three dimensions the area around it. Now it will know what size rocks it can safely go over, what size rocks it has to navigate around and therefore it will plan out a route which has zones of avoidance and it will only travel on the areas that it considers to be safe in order to get to its next position. From a given communication system on, on Earth, it will only have limited opportunities each day on Earth to communicate with that, with that rover. The rover will be sending its signals from the surface of Mars through a communication link to an orbiter around Mars and from there back to the Earth. So that will determine the, the number of opportunities that you get to exchange signals with, with Mars. We built a series of test rovers over time to, to improve our understanding of how the wheels engage with the soil on Mars and how the, 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 the undercarriage, if you like, the, uh, the, the, the chassis uh, has to be designed to cope with those different different conditions and with the control that's then needed to, to, to drive it under different conditions. So this is one of our prototypes. His name is Bruno. They've all got names. So Bruno was really the first rover that we used to truly develop all of the autonomous navigation systems, all of the, the guidance systems 
localization systems. So he's got quite representative locomotion, so the, the wheels, the suspension and the drive systems are all quite representative of what we expect the final design to be like. But the actual body of Bruno is really just this skeleton, and that's because on Mars the gravity is about a third of what it is here on Earth. So if we want him to behave in terms of driving, so things like sinking into the sand or sliding down slopes, in the same way that he would on Mars, he can only be 0.36 of the mass of the final rover. So this is Bridget, this is the very first prototype that we built, and that was quite some years ago now. So she's a lot more chunky than her later generations, and that means that she is much more the actual mass that the final rover will be. So she's got more of a body here, which is actually more similar to the final rover design. This is Brian. This isn't quite even now the final design, but again, we've got various different changes in the actual locomotion system. So we've got slightly different designs of the bogey systems and slightly different grousers on the wheels, which are these things that we use to, to grip in the, the sand and when climbing over rocks. We've also got this big tower on the back, and that's not because that's representative of what the actual final rover is going to be like. It's just to raise the central gravity so that when it drives, it behaves in a similar way to the final rover. 2018 sounds like a long way away, but in sort of space development terms, that's really not very long at all. So for the structure, the structure has to be ready quite soon, actually, because all of the other systems have to be integrated onto that structure before it can go up, and all of the testing has to take place once it's integrated onto that final rover. So we've only really got about 18 months left until we have to deliver our final flight rover body, and then everything else will get integrated onto it. So we're actually quite a tight timetable for development of this rover.